Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And this video kind of caught me by surprise. I forgot all about the advent of code. I don't know what made me think of it. And then when I started it up, I'm like, I, I was already like 45 minutes late. I'm like, this is ridiculous. How did I forget this? But it's the 2021 advent of code, day one. This is the sonar sweep example problem. And uh, here's a solution. I was, I, I'm running in C++ because I'm grading and doing all sorts of stuff. So in C++ right now, and my mind is racing at a mile a minute here. But uh, so since I'm thinking C++, I just, I've decided to write my code in C++. The first couple days are pretty simple for C++. And then for me, it gets a little more complicated. And then I like to use uh, something new. I, I used Python last year. I think I'm gonna go again with Python once I get, uh, once I get going once I kind of get the wheels spinning here. So part zero of this thing was to take, is basically for me to just take this file, and I didn't necessarily have to bring it into a vector, but I did. And so just to, I could run this one by one by one, uh, but I did that, so I opened the file using an IF stream. Uh, I set up a vector of measurements. I think there's 2,000 of them. And again, your data might be different than mine, so it's just so that uh, you can't just trick the system and just put in the number. Uh, so, if, so you might have to run this code, and so the vector starts up, and while there's data to to main to, to you know to get from the file, get that data and put it into the you know put it in and close the file. So before I even talk about part one, then when the file gets input, and don't worry, yeah, don't worry about my warnings. That's just because I'm not using size t. I will probably do that here, and then you can see the measurements. There's two thousand of them, and there they go. Blah blah blah. Okay, so that's that's the part zero, getting the data into the system, right? And so let me just let me make my I'll, I just want my I just want to feel better about this because I always tell my tell all my students that uh, consider warnings as errors. And let me just don't even look at that. Don't even look. Don't look at any of this. This will get rid of the warnings. Okay, so now part one. You can see it's only a couple lines of code. So the thought process is you're just looking from one to the next. Uh, you know, one element to the next, and you're just checking to see if the next element is larger than the previous one. That's really all there is to it. And in my case, I started with the the second element, and remember, of course, uh, all, at least in C++ and most languages, we start counting from element zero. So if I start from element one and I say, hey, is element one greater than element zero? And if it is, you know, I hit my counter. And then just keep doing that. Go to the next element, go to the next element, go to the next element, go to the next element. And that's all there is to it. It just you just add it, you just keep going, you add them up. And in my case, I got 1477. That's just what I got. And um, so if you got if you get that same number, you have the same data, then good for you. I'm not sure year to year. This is only my second year doing this, second or third year, I can't remember anymore. Uh, so that's how to do part one. And so part two is kind of the same thing. You'll, you'll notice here that this code is exactly the same. It's just the only difference here is that for part two then, you have to go about and set up uh, basically, instead of doing one measurement at a time, you're doing a, what do they call it here? A three measurement sliding window. And so that's, that is the only thing here where I set up a second vector where basically I take the first three elements of the, vec of the, of the measurements vector I add them together and I push that back into my new windows, the sliding window, and I just go and oh, you know, I can I start from two and I go all the way to the back just like I did before, and then it just give me you know give me the second the the give me the zero element, the one element, and the two, or give me the three, the two, and the one all the way to the back. So now I have a whole new set of measurements, but then at the end of the day I do exactly the same thing as I did before, if if I go element to element and the next one, next one over is larger than the previous, then I just then I just increment that. And so so when I do that, I get an I personally get an answer of fifteen hundred and twenty. So those are my answers for day one. And again, uh, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I did this as quick as I could to get this out. I did not realize I was an hour behind. So happy advent of code, everybody. If you have any questions or concerns or anything I need to fix, the only thing I don't want to hear about is dark mode. I am old. I like it like this. <laughs> Not so much. I get it. But I, for this, I'm, I, for some systems I use dark mode. For this, I seem to like light mode. 
That's just the way it's been for me. That's just my habit. So pff, whatever on you guys. So uh, thanks for sticking it out with me. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you. Hope it got you the answers you're searching for. And I am looking forward to day two. Uh, as always, I don't know how many of these I'm going to do because I get busy right near the end of the term here and I got students to grade and students to assist and my own classes to take and whatnot. So I hope to see you guys in tomorrow's video and I hope to make that uh, in 24 hours, 23 hours time. Take care everybody, bye.